Today I'm going to be going in depth and teaching you the best ways to key in After Effects using Keylight and explaining how I use Big Film's products to make something like this. Alright guys, so I messed up. I wanted to make this tutorial about how you should properly light a green screen and key it well and all that stuff. But whenever I started filming this project, I didn't have a lot of time, so uh, I kind of messed up. I, I didn't properly light the green screen, yielding in some bad key results. But there's a way to save it. So today I'm going to be teaching you how to save bad green screens and don't don't act like you're better than me i know that you've had bad green screens before i know you've lit a bad green screen before so don't come at me all right i'm just going to teach you how you can save that when you're in after effects so that's what we're going to do today all right so i'm in after effects and i have the clip here and here's what i was kind of explaining i kind of have uh this blue light this rgb light that i was lighting him with is hitting the green screen and what I should have done was lit the green screen separately or had it farther away or added more powerful lights to combat that blue or even flagged off the blue light so it's not hitting it but essentially it's now making like a tealish green screen which uh, doesn't really bode well for the keying process and I'll show you here in a minute why that is. This is a bad green screen lighting job, you know? One thing you could do that is better is going outside, that helps, but for this particular instance, it was like a night scene, this like RGB blue light, and so uh, I had to be inside and I was too, <laughs> I was too lazy to bring out any more lights. So it's just this light and then the house lights that are on, uh, which, uh, you know, I shouldn't have done that. I should have I should have been like, oh, there's a green screen tutorial. I should have made it better, but I didn't. So don't don't come at me. Uh, so <laughs> let's take this footage here and I'm going to drag and drop this into a new composition. And now we have um, ourselves this nice footage here of my friend Joey walking and now I told him to imagine he's on a rooftop and you know he, you can see it in his eyes you know he's really imagining that rooftop so uh so first thing let's do let's go and add um a key light effect so uh let's type in key light up in our search menu here and drag and drop it onto our footage so you know uh, you can go over here to the screen color and then there's a little eyedropper right next to it. So click that and then move over here and then click um, a neutral color in the green screen, which I would say maybe around here. Uh, see, that is the problem. The blue light is, the, the blue light is making the green screen think that it's blue and uh, you're basically, I'm keying out everything of the person. And even if we reset this, click that eyedropper, move over here, we're not really getting a good key. Now we could go in here and uh, so if you click the little color box here, it will open up a little uh, window here and then you can move this around and sometimes I'll have success by just moving this around and finding the best key and uh, but in this particular instance, it's really not. Oh, maybe doing this here. Oh, it's keying a little bit, uh, but it's still not getting all this blue area. And that is bad, right? So we can barely even key this, right? So um, how do we fix that? Now, a secret about keying is that you can make your footage look like whatever and you can help it key and then at the end, switch the color out. So that's what we're gonna do. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a Lumetri color to this. Lumetri color. And uh, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to open up the Curves drop-down menu and we're going to select the Hues versus Hue uh, selector and then we're going to click this eyedropper and click this blue right here. Now, we've created these three dots here and if we move this up, you can actually see what it's doing. If we move it up or down, we can now control the color of the green screen. So I'm now just forcing that blue to be more green. Now some of his shirt kind of gets uh, green, but we can fix that later and I'll show you how to do that as well. 
Um, and if you expand out either of these uh, points, you get more blue areas that are turning green. So now we're essentially turning that shade of blue green. And we can even, we'll close this out a little bit, maybe get some of that shirt detail back in there while also doing that. Uh, and then you can also go to hue versus saturation, select that and up the saturation of that blue shade and, and stuff like that. Or you can select the colors over here. It will create more uh, points to change. And essentially the goal is getting that blue back to a green, right? Um, just, just like so. Um, and it's actually a pretty effective way of getting this to work. To explain what this is doing, this is just changing a certain color's hue. So you can go in here and change like a blue to a green. That's all it's doing. Um, and it's actually extremely effective in doing so. So it's really just playing with these colors and really making it work, right? And now it's pretty good. Now his shirt is now that shade of green, but again, that's an easy fix to fix. But now he's separated out a little bit, right? Um, so let's now add key light. So let's add key light, drop it in. Now let's take the eyedropper and select the green. Now look what happened. We're now keying out uh, the guy. Now if we select the little green box, it'll bring up this uh, screen color um, picker here. And you can move this point around in space to get a better key. And I'm going to try to get those shadows going away. And if I just move it up like that, it looks like the shadows have disappeared. And look at that. Now we have keyed out him. Now we do have this hole in his shirt, but that is going to be really easily fixed. Okay, so first thing, let's try to get rid of all of this extra stuff here. So let's uh, hit our pin tool, or you can hit G if you like. Uh, make sure your clip is selected and kind of roughly mask, make some points and click, and then close the mask by just clicking the last one. And now, we're just selecting on the person, right? And if you hit M on your keyboard and hit the key frame button here, the little stopwatch, we can now animate the mask. And so we're just gonna move forward a little bit, move it to fit, move to the end, move it to fit. And then go to the end and basically go through the clip and make it work. Beautiful. Now let's uh, make sure this edge looks nice. So I'm gonna add the effect called Key Cleaner uh, right here. I'm gonna drag and drop it on. And that just makes the edges of the key a little bit cleaner. Um, you can up the radius if you want it to look better. Um, now let's try to fix this hole in his shirt. This is actually a pretty easy thing to do. So first thing we're going to do, um, we're going to make a mask around, make sure your uh, clip is selected, make a mask around that area, right? Then we're going to do the same thing like we did for the uh, garbage mat layer. We're just going to mask the path again, animate it, and then go to the end, make a keyframe, and just follow the shirt as best as you can. One thing to note is I am making sure that this mask is not going outside of where the green screen would be. It's only inside where the green screen isn't because what we're gonna be doing is basically saying to key light, don't look at this area, do not key this area. All right, cool. So the way to now get that uh, detail back is then hitting E on your keyboard. Uh, and another way you can do a drop down and, and make sure you go to your effects uh, panel. Uh, and then you'll drop down key light and go all the way to the bottom. And it says compositing options and then click the plus and make sure that second mask is clicked. So what that's going to do is gonna turn off your, your green screen, but don't fret. What we need to do is hit M on our keyboard 
and switch that second mask layer, the one that we made, to subtract. And what that's saying is, hey, um, I'm taking this mask layer, so if I go back to my key light, I'm taking this compositing layer, this mask reference, and I'm not, so you were subtracting out this area, and all we're saying is key out this donut shape right here. This is all we're telling key light to key, and it's not even referencing that middle of the shirt. So that's how we get that detail back. And this is actually a really clever way. You can also duplicate your layer without a key light effect and do the same thing, but this is really cleaner. It's just one layer instead of two. So I like doing this way. All right, now we have ourselves a nice keyed layer, right? So one thing that we can notice is that the colors are kind of messed up comparatively to that original image, right? It, his shirt isn't green, right? But that's because we had to make it green to uh, actually do this effect properly, right? So um, how do we get that color information back? Really simple. Duplicate your layer, just like so, and delete all the effects on it. So now we have one that has no effects on it, and we could even delete these masks as well. So essentially, we just have our regular video back on top. And then if we go to toggle switches and modes and we go to this layout on our After Effects and you find the track mat um, options here, we're going to pick whip this to uh, wh whichever one that has the effects. So we're going to take our one with no effects and pick whip it to the one with effects just like that. And then what you'll see is we get that color information back because what we're essentially telling After Effects is, hey, let's just take the alpha of the um, thing that we keyed. And so we essentially mess with the colors so we can key it. And now we're saying, okay, now I don't want to use that colors anymore. And we're using the original and we're just stealing the key from something that looks more wonky, right? So. That's how you do it. It's a very cool way to key. So then we can pre-compose this and uh, let's move all the attributes. It won't let you do anything else. And then call this keyed guy. Cool, now we have a keyed guy. Now we have this keyed guy that we can do whatever we want with. Um, so one thing you may notice is the edges are a little bit darker around the edges or or it has a little bit of a green bleed. Now, if I up the exposure, you can kind of see that a little more. It has that green bleed and we really don't want that. And a way to make that work is, uh, or make that go away, is add the effect Refine Hard Matte. Now, this is a secret sauce that I don't see a lot of people doing. So click that, put it on your pre-composed layer and we're gonna disable all the effects but one. So just put zero on all of these and uh, disable the motion blur, but keep decontaminate edge colors. And what that's doing, and if I turn on and off this effect, you can see that it's taking the edge details a little, a couple pixels in and then kind of expanding those out. So uh, if I up the exposure here, you can see that better. Um, it's taking, so this is with it off and you can see kind of that green edge and then I turn that on and it really uh, makes that edge less clear. And really it's a subtle thing, but uh, sometimes you absolutely need it and sometimes you don't. In this case, you probably didn't because it's so RGB and different looking. But uh, for, for this, I just want to tell you that this is a great effect. If you're getting like a weird edge around your image, like it's dark or something, this is a great way to fix it. And if you need it more, you can increase the edge radius and you can make it look really good. All right, so a quick tip there. Um, now let's do some fun stuff. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to add my backdrops. So I found this little uh, rooftop backdrop and this little night backdrop and I'm going to kind of scale it down and sort of make everything sort of fit. Now it's just sort of going in 
and fixing everything to make this look good. So after you've keyed, this is when you're compositing. So um, we're going to add uh, Lumetri color to the backdrop because you can see that both this and this are blue and I want that to look right. So we're just going to take that backdrop, add a Lumetri color, make it more blue, just increasing the temperature and sort of just messing with the colors to make everything work. I'm also going to add a camera lens blur to the backdrop and probably adding an adjustment layer and adding the camera lens blur effect above that and then adding some blur here just so it's matching the blur of this other backdrop as well. I'm also going to go in and add some Lumetri color on an adjustment layer over everything and just add uh, some curves, like an S curve, and really mess with these colors to make it look kind of uh, more uh, homogenized. I'm gonna darken everything to make it more moody. All right, great, so now I've kind of messed with all the colors and stuff. Um, and then it's actually really fun because now I'm gonna go into big films and I'm gonna add a couple um, big films effects to uh, the plate. And I really like the look of Big Film, uh, Big City 2, which is just this really nice looking, um, really cool like hologram. This is in our Cyber City pack. And if we scale it down, we can position it and make it look good and, and make sure that this is underneath that camera lens blur effect because it's getting that proper blur it needs to. And just kind of positioning it and making it look good. And I might even add uh, another one of my favorites is this ninja from that. And this is a big city kind of hologram. And this is kind of the key to make this like look really sci-fi and fun is going and just adding these really cool effects. It's literally drag and drop. Um, just scaling it down, moving it around. It looks really good. It just looks already. It looks good. I didn't have to do anything. Um, so yeah, uh, that was this shot essentially. So for this other shot, this one here, um, it was the same thing. I keyed out him and I added the, the backdrops and the blurs. The only difference I did was added, um, the explosions and such to one of the buildings in our destruction pack. Um, and how I kind of made the destruction pack, cause in the destruction pack, it's really, it, it's daytime, it's for daytime footage. But um, I kind of went in here. First I used the corner pen tool to make it work with the perspective of the shot. Then I dropped the exposure using the exposure down to like negative three. Then I added a tint effect and that was just a way to make it more blue. Uh, see like the white effect is kind of more bluish here. And then I added a Lumetri color using that same mask effect we use for the key light thing where I'm just essentially using a mask, uh, this mask here, and I'm telling the Lumetri color to use that mask and essentially all it's doing is adding that Lumetri color on that side. And that was just so this little, uh, the, the, the big old, uh, whale is kind of casting like a bluish light on the, the building. And I also added another Lumetri color effect using that same te technique to get this like highlight, a sun highlight that's from the original image and sort of dropping down the exposure of that thing. Cool, and that's essentially it. And then I added some explosions from the superhero pack and they look really good. Um, I think I also added some sparks and it looks really good. And then I'm adding the whales and the different big city elements and it <laughs> just looks really good. And that was it. Thank you all for watching. Please make sure to subscribe and comment on the video. Have a nice day, everyone.